The Schoolock Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community answers questions on everybody's mind right now politically. But I decided to go ahead and explore this scenario that if Trump don't leave, you know, he probably don't have no plans to, you know, get stimulus or not. You know, you don't know what he's tweeting this and that every day. You know, we not partisan. You know, we with him if he giving stimulus we you know we not with them if he not giving stimulus i mean that's basically what you know this channel is about but anyway we not partisan whoever gives stimulus go ahead and give stimulus that's the but let's just explore this idea i'm gonna pass it to my homeboy james james go ahead and take this away. the school lock stimulus lighthouse alert community presents what occurs if trump refuses to concede the u.s election now biden has won the U.S. will get an uncharted territory if the president declines to leave the White House. While dealing with a book about the tranquil succession of power, I came to recognize that constructed into our system of governmental elections is a Chernobyl-like flaw. Positioned under the ideal conditions of tension, the system is susceptible to devastating breakdown. The danger of such an electoral crisis generally is rather small. However, this November promises in a manner last seen in 1876 to provide a combination of stress factors that might lead to legendary failure. The issue begins however does not end with Donald Trump, who, in his current interview with Chris Wallace, when again reminded the country that losing is not an option. He will reject any election that leads to his loss, claiming it to be rigged. Disconcerting as this may be, Trump alone cannot crash the system. Rather, an uncommon constellation of forces the requirement to rely greatly on mail-in tallies due to the fact that of the COVID-19 pandemic, the political divisions in the crucial swing states of Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, and a hyper-polarized Congress all collaborate to turn Trump's defiance into a crisis of historical proportions. Ought to Trump lose decisively not only in the popular vote, but in electoral college, to his capability to participate in constitutional brinkmanship will be restricted. Consider the following circumstance, it's November 3, 2020 election day. By midnight, it's clear that previous Vice President Biden delights in a substantial lead in the national popular vote but the electoral college vote remains tight. With the races in 47 states and the District of Columbia called, Biden leads Trump in the Electoral College vote 252 to 240, but neither prospect has protected the 270 votes required for success. All eyes remain on Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and their 46 Electoral College votes. In each of these three states, Trump delights in a slim lead, but the Election Day returns do not consist of a big variety of mail-in ballots. Some states, such as Colorado, have actually been counting their mail-in votes from the day they showed up, however not Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. These states do not permit elections authorities to start the task of counting the mail-ins till election day itself. It will take days, even weeks, for the key swing states to finish their count. The election hangs in the balance. Just not for Trump. Based on his 3rd of November leads, Trump has currently stated himself re-elected. His reputable loudspeakers in the right-wing media repeat and enhance his statement, and prompt Biden to yield. Biden states he will do no such thing. Biden knows that the bulk of the mail-in tallies have been cast in populous urban locations, where citizens hesitated to expose themselves to the health dangers of in-person voting. And he is acutely mindful that metropolitan citizens vote overwhelmingly Democratic. Certainly, this phenomenon, in which mail-in and provisional tallies generally break Democratic, has actually been dubbed blue shift by election law specialists. The count of the mail-in ballots in the three swing states is pestered by holdups. Overworked election officials, slowed by the need to maintain social distance, struggle to process the big volume of votes. Trump's attorneys, helped by the Department of Justice, bring several fits firmly insisting that tens of countless votes need to be tossed out for having failed to arrive by the date defined by statute. All the same, as the count creeps forward, a clear pattern emerges. Trump's lead is diminishing and after that vanishes entirely. By the time the three states finish their canvas of votes nearly a month after the election, the nation deals with an amazing result. Biden now leads in all three. It appears he has actually been elected our next president. Just Trump tweets bloody murder. All his most alarming forecasts have occurred. The mail-in tallies are infected with fraud. The extreme Democrats are trying to steal his success. The election has actually been rigged, he states. Now things take an ominous turn. Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania all share the same political profile. All three states are controlled by Republican legislatures faithful to Trump. And so Republican legislators in Lansing, Madison and Harrisburg take up the fight to state Trump triumphant in their state. 
citing irregularities and unconscionable holdups in the counting of the mail-in tallies, state Republicans award Trump their state's electoral college votes. Yet all three of our essential swing states likewise have Democratic governors. Annoyed by the actions of Republican lawmakers, the Democratic govs of Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania reveal that they will recognize Biden as having carried their state. They license Biden as the winner, and send out the certificate cast by his electors onto Congress. It is now January 6, 2021, the day on which the joint session of Congress opens the state's electoral certificates and formally tallies the votes. Generally this is a ceremonial function, however not today. Unexpectedly Congress is faced with the astonishing truth that Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania have each sent clashing electoral certificates one granting its electoral college votes to Trump, the other, to Biden. The election hangs in the balance. Appears far-fetched. And yet the nation dealt with an almost similar crisis in the notorious hayes tilden election of 1876, when three different states sent clashing electoral certificates. With neither Hayes nor Tilden enjoying an electoral college majority, a divided Congress a Democratic House and a Republican Senate battled bitterly over which certificates to acknowledge. Congress tried to resolve things by handing the issue to a one-off special electoral commission, but partisan rancor played the work of that body, too. Inauguration Day neared and the nation had no president-elect or rather, it had two rivals both declaring success. President Ulysses S. Grant Wade declaring martial law. Catastrophe was avoided just by a last-second dreadful compromise between the celebrations, Republicans consented to eliminate federal troops from the South, paving the way to Jim Crow, and in return, Samuel Tilden, the Democrats' candidate, accepted yield. Chastened by that experience, Congress passed a law the Electoral Count Act of 1887, ECA, indicated to assist Congress must a state ever again submit more than one electoral certificate. Considering that its passage, the provisions of the ESSA have been activated only when that was back in 1969, and the concern was unimportant, with no bearing on Nixon's success. In January 2021, nevertheless, the country finds itself in a real electoral crisis and lawmakers rapidly realize that the 1887 law is glaringly lacking, failing to prepare for the most destabilizing contingencies.